Uh, greetings, all. You know, yesterday I spoke about growing food in uh, difficult climatic situations. Uh, so, yeah, here's a part two. Yeah, I'm continue. There's more to say on that. There's a lot, a whole lot more than I've thought of so far. <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm not quite sure I understood a uh, comment from one viewer. That and he said my comments about the growing techniques was well beyond his understanding. I, I didn't think I got too carried away uh, as far as that kind of technical stuff. Uh, elevate it, <laughs> dig a trench, let the water drain off, have some good drainage so it, <laughs> you know, okay. I, 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 irrigate that means water. You know, put water on the plant. I didn't think I got that carried away. Maybe I was using the wrong terminology. I don't know. Maybe I should have said you got to water your plants instead of irrigate them. Um, anyhow, it, it will get weirder today. Uh, so if you didn't understand the last one, then this one's going to get probably harder yet. Um, I want to talk about uh, soil health uh, as opposed to plant health, weather, uh, and climate change. Soils are living. Now, there has been, oh, some scientific school of thought that led us astray down a primrose path from the 19th century that identified plants as utilizing basic elements as foodstuffs, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and then uh, other micro and macro nutrients like calcium, iron, you know, and so on. Um, and so science said, oh, well, if that's what they use, if we throw that stuff at them, they're going to grow. Well, that's true. They will. But in nature, there's really nobody throwing that stuff at them. I mean, you know, maybe a mongoose took a dump next to the coconut palm, and there's some food value in that for the plant. But uh, by and large, n things in nature are much, much more integrated and uh, complicated systems. Very complicated systems uh, that make all of this happen. So... As climate changes and growing gets more difficult all the time, you want to have all your mm, tomatoes in one basket. Yeah. And then the health of the soil is going to make a whole lot of difference as far as what happens to the crop. And so soils are not just composed of uh, mineral materials. Uh, most of them are, unless they're peat soils. You know, they have a, a ground rock of some sort, a clay, a sand, or something at the basis of them. But they contain organic matter. That would be the residue of plants and animals that had lived on the soils that are now dead. They contain living organisms and that, well, the plants themselves, just the fine root hairs and stuff. Uh, if you're here in Hawaii and you're planting coffee and it's on lava, you know, <laughs> the roots of the trees will crack that lava and get, uh, get work their way down in there. They do. They work their way in little bits at a time. Well, ensuring that you have the right amount and uh, type of microbes in the soil, bacteria, yeasts, fungi, especially fungi. Uh, for us gardeners, uh, we like the term uh, mycorrhizal relationship or mycorrhizae. These are fungus that have associations with other plants, green plants. Well. Uh, the mycorrhizae are not all the same. There are at least two basic types. There's the endo and the ecto mycorrhizae. That's the types that either grow along the outside of a root surface or some that will actually penetrate the root surface. The ones that penetrate the root surface actually take some sugars and things from plants. So they're borrowing. But they give back a lot of other things that the plants find hard to get. And when it comes to climate change, and when we're worried about drought, drought in particular, um, while I lived in California, I was always amazed by the fact that you could find, oh, manzanita, for instance. Uh, it's a you know evergreen shrub growing right off the side of a rock. Um, 
in a climate where they only get a foot of rain every year and it only comes in three months during the winter and so for nine months every year that thing hangs off the side of a rock and there's no soil yet it looks healthy well the reason it can do that is mycorrhizal relationships native communities if they're healthy are filled with them and they are also um they associate sometimes with many different plants the same fungi will actually attach to a number of different types of plants and so like in a landscape when you're creating it if you're uh, creating a community that allows the to have the grasses and to have the forbs and the trees and shrubs that the, these mycorrhizae may share um, makes a healthier situation as i was saying about that manzanita on the side of a rock there are fungal strands in, in, in these mycorrhizae associations. There's strands, usually white threads in the soil, that are hooked into and onto around the roots of this little manzanita hanging off a rock. Now, somewhere down in a hollow, there is a bunch of moisture yet. Yeah, there's a little swamp hole down there, and there's water in it. Even during the dry middle part of summer, you might find some nettles down there and some mud. Um, there'd be various reasons why that could be. It could be springs. It could be a lot of different things. could just be runoff. But there will be water around somewhere. The fungal associations, uh, fungi are at this point known as some of the largest living organisms on the face of the planet we have fungi that extend uh, over the border of upper michigan and wisconsin it's in two states we have them over the borders of washington and oregon uh, where there's fung one single mushroom lives in two states it's that big well <sighs> As the mycorrhizae spread through different dry and wet areas, they pick up moisture which they pump through the strands. They attach to your plants in your garden and they will pump water to plants. They do that. They will balance dryness and moisture. A wet spot becomes less wet and a dry spot becomes more moist. They also share nutrients, um, things that are hard for plants to get at, things like metals, zinc, and things like that. The fungi are pretty darn good at fixing them, and they will give them to the plants. They exchange them for some sugars. But I think to keep this one simple, when it comes to uh, uh, global warming, climate change, problems with agriculture, and just plain crazy weather, um, I'm advocating that you start working with the soil health. Now, chemical fertilizers, you know, triple 16 in a bag and so on, they will feed your plants, but they don't feed your soil. And in fact, they can be very hostile to the life in the soil. When they're used constantly, farm fields find themselves almost completely sterilized of the beneficial organisms. Uh, it's one reason they have to use so many agricultural chemicals to kill fungi and things, because once you wipe out the beneficials in an area, the first thing that comes on is gonna be the most hostile, nasty, ugly thing on earth. Uh, whether that's stirring up the dirt and letting the weeds come in or whether it's damaging the soil health by overwatering or harsh f chemical fertilizers and then when things begin to reestablish uh, they don't culture back right necessarily uh, you really need to give them a hand uh, bringing cultures in from healthy environments and adding them to yours isn't the worst idea in the world uh, that's basically you know, how we get um, the uh, rhizobia bacteria on the roots of koa nobody's making that stuff commercially to inoculate a koa tree which is a legume uh, you, you really need to go to a tree that has the rhizobia in the woods somewhere get some live root bring it home put it in a blender with water and then take it out and inoculate your trees with the slurry Almost every legume in your garden, that would be beans, peas in particular, those are the two most common, uh, soybeans, edamame, and so on, uh, they all have rhizobia on the roots. Now, 
most legumes have their own strains. Most of the garden legumes, uh, Rhizobia japonica will work quite well. What it is, is it's a bacteria and it's going to make little nodules on the roots. And those nodules are going to store free nitrogen radicals every time there's a thunderstorm or any time there's nitrogen around that something else isn't using and it can absorb it. The bacteria will take it, store it in the little nodules in the roots, allow the plant that they're growing on to utilize some of that so that it actually feeds the pea or the bean, um, making its own fertilizer internally but when the pea or the bean die the rhizobia is released and so is the nutrient into the soil and so it enriches uh, it also inoculates if you do enough of this you don't have to inoculate anymore because your soil will have natural rhizobia you may not have it un initially you may be lacking a whole lot of stuff there are uh, soil cultures out there. Um, now, things in the business change so rapidly. I've been out of uh, uh, commercial nursery as in, you know, selling uh, <laughs> fertilizers and all that stuff for a long time. But when I was in business, um, there was a company owned by Milo Sheamus called uh, Dr. Earth. It's a fertilizer, organic fertilizer company. I believe the product had been purchased then by Kellogg Cascade and Company, who sells bag soils. Um, and whether they have reformulated Melo's recipe or not, I, I'm not sure. But the, I think the product is still out there on the market. And whether it is or it isn't, flip over the back of organic fertilizer bags and have a good look at what they have in there and i'm not really talking about you know what they derive the nutrients from if it says it was derived from chicken manure and if you're paying any serious price for it walk away that's cheap stuff and chicken manure is fine but you shouldn't be paying a lot of money for that now, if you're going to pay money for a fertilizer and buy something really quality, you want to be looking at things that are based on fish, fish bone meal, feather meal, alfalfa meal, uh, I, I soybean meal, cottonseed meal. I can go on and on. These are much more expensive materials okay, than chicken manure, and they're generally better. But you will also see lists of microbes, fungi, yeast bacteria there'll be a whole pile of azobacters rhizobias and all sorts of different stuff that's on there uh if it has a pretty good uh, count <laughs> if it's got a fairly long list it's probably what you're looking for we don't know what you're lacking you know maybe you're not lacking anything but it's not gonna hurt to start using an organic fertilizer that contains uh, micronutrients and contains uh, inoculants to have beneficial microbial and fungal inoculants in that bag um, in nature most of the work is done by those inoculants the microbes the fungi that's what does most of the work in nature there isn't a little green gnome that dances around with a bag of triple 16 in a redwood forest and throws the stuff that is how it works nope let's get some really complicated systems and of course floods droughts um, and different sorts of weather phenomena actually can damage soil uh, you can damage soil badly in a drought or you can follow a drought with a flood oh boy uh yeah so you you should be paying close attention to this and none of those microbes are going to work well without organic matter we need organic matter and me i like the green stuff uh, i mean you can go out and buy it if you want to they sell stuff chances are here in the island you buy it and you might be hauling in little fire ants you might be hauling in nematode anytime you're importing from some other source you run the risk of bringing in something you did not want i've done it <laughs> yeah i know so i tend to be rather sterile and when it comes to most of the organic matter i grow it yeah i just i grow the plants in situ next to the shrubs that i'm trying to fruit and i just kill the the cover crop or the stick mulch plant uh, and feed it to the crop plant 
I have less trouble with importing problems that way. The problems that I have are already here, and they go around in little circles like the frogs and stuff and, and ants, but yeah, at least I'm not bringing in new ones. Okay, well, there is kind of a little bit about climate change and soil health, okay, but there's more. Yeah, I can go on like this for a long time now that I start thinking about it. All righty, so get that soil up to perfect health. Aloha, hang loose.